Welcome back, fuckers. Alrighty, in today's video, we're going to be running through how to set up a JTAC using the CTLD scripting. And then once we've gone through that, we're going to do a, an advanced attack using a laser guided bomb and the JTAC lasering a target. And we're going to do a, a bomb toss onto a SAM site and try and take it out. All right, so that is the plan for today's sortie. So you get to learn how to do a bit of mission, and mission editing, and you also get to practice some cool stuff with a little bit more advanced things with the, uh, the laser guided bombs. And you also work with J, uh, JDAMs as well, but obviously you wouldn't need a JTAC for this if you're doing JDAM. All right, so first things first, you need to download uh, the CTLD script files, okay, the Lua files, and you can find that in the description below. All right, I'll put the link down there. It should be down there. Click on it, and it should be loading up this bad boy right there once you've clicked on it. All right, so once it's loaded up, you're going to come over here and you're going to click on release 20211 or whatever the latest release is. If you're watching this at a later date, click on that. That's going to be the latest release. And you're going to come down and you select source code. Click on that to download it. Once you have downloaded the source code, you're then going to come on over into uh, a folder of your choice. You're going to extract that file. Okay, extract the folder out of your source code. And it's going to be called DCSCTLD202111. And it's going to look like this. Okay, you're going to have a CTLD and a missed file. All right, both of those are going to be in there. Okay, CTLD and missed is what we're after. So make sure you take note of wherever you put this folder because you're going to be loading these two things in to the mission editor. Okay, those two Lua files. Don't stress, it's very, very easy. Okay, I promise your brain won't melt too much. So that is that. So we're going to go back here to the uh, the main page, DCS CTLD, and it's got a readme file of how to install it and all the rest of it. So if you want to deep dive into this, you can do a whole lot of stuff. If you've played on uh, multiplayer servers where you can like pick stuff up with troop, uh, pick troops up, you can drop crates off and all that stuff. They are most likely using this DCS CTLD uh, scripting to do stuff. So you can do a whole heap of stuff um, with this if you're very savvy with uh, writing coding and stuff. But for us, what we're looking for is down here. So this is all the stuff you can do with the uh, with this lovely little uh, scripting file. So we're looking for the JTAC automatic targeting and laser. That's what we're after. So we just clicked on that, and then it just brings you right to the spot that we want. All right. So we'll get back back. Blah, 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 blah. We'll get back to that in a second. So let's quickly put down our target that we're going to try and hit. So I'm looking for, I want somewhere that is going to be a bit of a challenge and that we can use a, a bit of terrain. Uh, actually, no, we'll, we'll make it super hard. Okay, we're going to put in the middle, flat ground. There's nothing we can hide behind and we're going to fly in super low and do a, a bomb toss and take out a SAM site with a laser guided bomb using the JTAC as our little buddy to help us. So we're going to put in a template here. So you're going to come over to the edit. You're going to add template. You're going to select your uh, faction, Russia, and we're going to put in a... What should we put in, guys? What should we put in? An SA-10? Nah, SA-10 has got a few radars. Let's put a... We'll go with like a SA-6. Go that to start with. Right, it's because the SA-10 will have to do a couple of runs. And I just want to drop, we'll drop one bomb, get the hell out of Dodge. So we've selected SA-6 SAM battery, pop it there, zoom in, make sure that it's um, not blocked by trees or anything like that. Okay, switch the satellite view if you need to, close that out, and that is our, our, uh, our target for today. All right, so we've got our, our SAM site we're going to try and hit. We're also going to put in us as an aircraft. Uh, making an F-18, client, not Russia, America, um, let's select our skin, trust you, yeah, um, and I want to take that load out right there, eight GBUs, we don't need eight, we should only need one, so it's got full, uh, Change that to just a GBU 12. 
Let's remove pylon. Remove pylon. And take one J down. Okay, so we've got GBU 12 and a GBU, uh, GBU 38. We're going to be taking the, J, uh, the, the GBU 12. Right. Done and done. Got our aircraft in. Let's uh, put him at 0 0.8 Mac and 15,000 feet. And I'm also, copy. I'll put another one in right there. Okay, so we're going to have two, two SAM sites relatively close together. Okay, so we've got a JDAM and a GBU. We're going to do a bomb toss with both types, a JDAM and a GBU. And I'll put the, uh, the SAM sites relatively close so we don't have to fly for ages to get this one out. All right, that's that done. So now we need to put in a JTAC unit. So for your JTAC, you can put in a ground unit of your choosing. So we're gonna make sure we select USA. Uh, and we're just gonna make this guy just a little infantry guy. So we're gonna pick an M4 infantry guy. We're gonna put him on the ground there. All right, and the only thing you need to worry about is you need to be within 4,000 meters. All right, I don't know what that is in feet. So let's quickly change that. All right, so from our little JTAC guy, 4Ks, and change it back to Imperial. Of course you don't. All right, let's move him. Oh, there we go. 2.16 nautical mile. All right, so as long as you're within two miles of the, uh, the ground targets, the JTAC will see it. That's the range of the JTAC by default in the scripting. So as long as they're both within two miles of your JTAC and he's got line of sight and line of sight for the JTAC is terrain only. So if he's uh, hidden in a tree or a building, he's still going to be able to laze through that. That's right? just how the scripting works. But if he's blocked by a mountain or a hill, he doesn't have line of sight. He won't be able to actually hit it. So if at all possible, you want to try and put your JTAC on an elevated position looking down. So they've got uh, eyes on. But in this case, it's flat ground. The JTAC's going to see him, no worries at all. Straight line of sight. Cool. Done. So we got our JTAC there, and we're going to call this guy uh, JTAC. Um, just for the sake of this, we will just call it JTAC1. And we'll put it in caps box. JTAC1. All right. He is done, named. Only other thing we're going to do is we want to make this guy not being able to be seen by these ground units, and we also want to tell him to don't shoot at the ground units as well. So we're going to come down here into your advanced waypoint actions. You're going to come down to perform command, and you're going to go to invisible. All right, so it's making him invisible to the red unit. So if there was a tank or something that could shoot at him and blow him up, we don't want him to die, okay? Um, if you want realism, then don't do this, and you have to make sure you put your JTAC somewhere that they don't shoot at. So that's that, and we're going to go one more, and I think it is in set options. Yeah, ROE, rules of engagement. We're going to tell him to weapon hold. So he's not going to shoot at these guys. They can't see him, so he's just sitting there. He's going to do his job, all right, which is lazing targets for us. So take note, we've called him JTAC1. Now we're going to load in the, uh, the scripting. So you're going to come over to the rules for trigger here. Okay, so on the left-hand side, underneath the date, time, and weather, set rules for trigger. We're going to make a new trigger. I'm going to call this guy uh, load mist. And I like to use caps. For my trigger names, I don't know why. The uh, condition, we're going to make this a time more than. And we're going to make this uh, five seconds. Five seconds. And then in the action, we're going to have do script file. And then you're going to open up that folder you just downloaded, the CTLD folder. All right. Wherever you had it, DCS CTLD 202, whatever the folder is called that you just downloaded. And you're going to click on the mist.lua file. So we want to load the mist file first. Okay, mist.lua, done. So that is going to load in at five seconds after the mission started. It's going to 
load in the mist file into the mission. I'm going to clone this. I'm going to change this to CTLD. Time more. We're going to go another five seconds, so 10 seconds. And then we're going to change. Instead of mist, we're going to go CTLD. All right, so that is our, our mission scripting um, file loaded into the mission. So now we can do our JTAC, set our JTAC up. Right, let's bring up this. So again, remember I just clicked on to get to where this is on the DCS CTLD main page. Scroll down and we are looking at JTAC automatic targeting and laser. I've clicked on that and it brings you down to here. <clears throat> All right. So you can have a read of this, go more into it if you want to. But what we are interested in is this guy right here. Okay, these examples and we're going to copy this so the default jtac uh, laser code is 1688 all right 1688 is what it will be deployed as but if we want to change the laser code we're going to copy the following so the script command is this so we're just going to copy this one right here so control c to copy him all right and we're going to paste that in in a second, but we'll quickly talk about what this is. So the in the apostrophes here, JTAC1, that is the unit name or the group name that you gave your JTAC. So we called ours in the mission editor, remember, JTAC1, just because, just for this example, but I could call it whatever I wanted, Axeman, you know, I can, whatever, whatever cool name you want to give your JTAC, you can call it uh, that name. Okay, but just make sure whatever name the group is in the mission editor, it's the same name in the, uh, the apostrophe right there. The next... Thing in the comma, 1688, that's your laser code. So you can change the laser code to something different. So we will change the laser code to something else. Uh, false or true refers to smoke. So if you want your JTAC to put a smoke marker on the target, you can say true and it will smoke the target. And then the last one, it'll say all. So you've got a choice of either, it'll laser all targets in the area, so all ground units. So it's gonna laser um, infantry, it'll laser vehicles lays both of them if you want it to only lays vehicles all right you'd put vehicle in the, the apostrophes there if you only want him to lays ground troops you would put troops and if you wanted to lays all you just put all so we're just going to leave it as all we just want to lays everything and then the last one if you want him to put smoke down you can change the color of the smoke if you'd like to so after the the troop or the all or the vehicle you put a comma and then you write in either zero, one, two, three, or four. Okay. And your chart, your smoke colors. So green equals zero, red equals one, white equals two, orange equals three, blue equals four. So if you wanted to put down, you wanted your JTAC to put uh, red smoke on the target, you'd put number one at the end, just like that. Okay. And all this is right there, ready for you guys to read. Just scroll down. And the other thing that we're going to look at is this part right here. So this is going to give you a whole lot of uh, more realism for your JTAX because um, as it stands, when we load this in, he's just going to pick a random unit out of what he sees down there and he's going to start lazing it. And because we've got a SAM and a JTAC is going to be, they're going to pick out high priority targets. Okay, so there's no point him lazing a... Uh, an infantry guy on the ground when he's standing next to an SA-6 radar, right? And then you fly and you drop a bomb on the infantry guy and the radar is still up, but that's a waste of time. So we are going to be using this part here. So you can also change the name of a unit. Okay, it has to be the unit, not the group name, to include H priority to make it a high priority for the JTAC or prior priority to set it to be medium priority. JTACs will prioritize targets within view by first marking high priority targets, then priority targets, and finally all others. This works seamlessly with the all vehicle troop functionality as well. In this way, you can have the SAM, them lays SAMs, then AAA, then armor, or any other order you desire as preferable. So let's go and jump in and go through that. So now we're going to go into here. We're going to make a new trigger here, and we're going to call this um, JTAC on. All right, so our condition, so we need to make sure we've loaded both the MIS file and the CTLD. Okay, so at 10 seconds, both of those files are loaded in. So now we're going to make this a time more. 
time more, I'm going to make it 15 seconds. So 15 seconds after the mission started, it's going to enable our JTAC, all right? And then in our actions box, we're going to hit new. We're going to come down to do script, not do script file, do script. And we're going to paste in that thing we just copied here. Okay, so we just copied this top one. I just control C and I just control V'd it in. All right, so it is in there written in. So now let's run through. So just to explain this a bit more, I'm going to call this guy, um, let's just make him voodoo. Oh, if I can type voodoo one one. All right, so we're going to copy his name, copy <clears throat> and back into our scripting. And let's go through this. So in the little brackets here, I'm going to delete that and I'm going to paste in voodoo one one. So that's the name of the group. Okay, of the JTAC you've put in. The laser code, we're going to change it to, let's go 1, 6, uh, uh, I don't know, 8, 1. 1, 6, 8, 1. Just random. False, we're going to leave it as false because I don't want to put smoke on the tag because I don't think it looks realistic. And then all we're going to leave as, uh, so he's going to target everything down there that he sees. Okay, so he's going to laze every single one of these targets until they're all destroyed. And that's him. He's set up. JTAC is done. All right. So we're going to quickly uh, go into the mission editor now, uh, into the mission, and just check that the JTAC's actually working. So I will see you guys in the jet in a second, and we'll just confirm, then we'll uh, continue on with this. All right, guys. So we just spawned into the, the mission. Let's put ourselves in autopilot. So we're looking here. Our mission timer so at 10 seconds it's now loaded both our mist and our ctld file when it gets to 15 seconds we should get our jtac popping up there it is voodoo 11 lazing new target cub 2p25 launcher code 1681 position it's going to give you grid coordinates as well okay so lat long or mgs grid when it disappears you can get it back up if you want to copy down those coordinates you bring up your radio command go to f10 and then click on jtac status and it will reload this uh, this window and you can copy it down. He's also gonna tell you what else he sees visual on, blah, blah, blah. So that's all the other stuff he sees. All right, so he's working. JTAC is lazing a target on code 1681 over to our, uh, our right-hand side there, our three o'clock position. So let's go ahead and uh, before we do that. So if you notice there, JTAC status, he's lazing a launcher. Okay, LN, instead of the search track radar. So we want to kill the search track radar. That's our target. Like if we get rid of the search track radar, the launchers are, they're defunct. They don't count anymore. Okay, so we're going to go through now on how to prioritize targets. So we're going to come down here. We're going to zoom in. So this is the, this is the vehicle. Okay, the search track, ra uh, search track radar, the straight flush. This is the thing, the, uh, the heart of the SAM site. So if you take this, if you kill this, none of this other stuff matters. Okay, those launchers, they're worth nothing. Okay, they, they've got nothing to shoot because they're not getting told what to shoot at. So this is your number one target on an SA6. So we're going to change the name of this guy. All we're going to write is H priority. Just like that. H priority. Just like we did down here where it says H priority. Okay, so that's all you got to do. You just have to include H priority anywhere in the name of the unit, which is what we've done. All right. And then let's go to this guy, all right, which is the other group that we put in. And we're going to put this one, we're just going to write priority. Right. Priority. Got to spell it right. Priority, ground two one. So how he's going to laze? He's going to laze this guy first because we put him as high priority, and then he's going to laze this guy second because we put him at priority. And then from there, he's just going to pick random, random units in the area to kill. All right. So that's how you set a priority. Um, so say you had the SAM site there, and then we had a um, like a Shilka or something. So triple A. You could set the AAA, so you want all the SAM site stuff that you want to kill first, set them at higher priority. Next one you're going to set as priority and then leave the rest as um, just normal names. 
and he'll cycle through every high priority target that you write high priority in first. He'll kill all the high priority stuff, lays all that stuff to you, kill it all. Then he'll switch to the priority and then just everything else left after that. So we've set it up now. Good to go. And we're ready to do our attack run. All right. So in the F-18 Hornet at the moment, all right, the, uh, the Hornet needs a, the elevation of the ground the target area and at the moment the jtac i uh, don't know if they can make it so that he does i'm sure they can if they've got the uh coordinates i'm sure they can get the altitude put in but at, as it stands the jtac won't tell you the elevation for the target area so just keep that in mind um you're gonna have to guess the target elevation if you don't have eyes on and then you can kind of fine tune it from there which i'll go through now okay so we're going to go file um i'm not going to save it i don't want to uh, let's get this mission up and ready. I'm going to run through now how to do a, a bomb toss with a laser guided bomb and with a JDAM. All right, so let's jump ourselves in the jet and we'll get ourselves ready to rumble. All right, autopilot on. Turn this stuff up. We're going to go air to ground mode, get our JDAMs uh, doing their thing. Going to set our JDAM to TOO and our set our bombs up. So I'm not going to run through how to set up um, your laser gutter bombs and the JDAMs. I've got videos on both of those, and if I remember, I'll put a little thing up the top that uh, loads it up in the right hand corner here. Hopefully, uh, that'll give you the link there. You can click on that and watch those, and then come back to this if you want to. Uh, so I'm just going to quickly set this up real quick. And uh, what was the JTAX code he's lasing on? Again, 1681. 1681. Enter. Alrighty, and let's make sure our FLIR is on, which it is. Okay, so we've got ourselves all ready to go. So now we need to find the JTAC. Alright, so I'm going to. Put ourselves in a bit of a bank here. I'll copy this down. Yay, tax status. And we want uh, 38T KM. You son of a bitch. KM 57617. 5, Six nine two nine eight. Boom. We're just going to punch that in right now. Onto our HSI data size UFC grid uh, KM. And again, I'm not going to run through this how to do this stuff. You guys can watch the video that I made. Five seven six one seven. Six nine two nine eight. Enter. All right, an elevation. We're just gonna guess it at the moment. We're gonna go like uh, let's go like twenty feet. It's pretty much at sea level. Enter. All right, piss that off. Righto. So what we're gonna do? We're gonna waypoint designate that guy. We're gonna go to our FLIR pod. It should be looking over in the area there. So we're currently thirty three point thirty four miles away. Be able to see this guy. You can see we've got two SA6s there on the RWR. Let's go to this page. Alrighty. That's that stuff. Right, so let's have a look. There he goes. There he is. He's lasing that guy. So we're looking pretty much right at him there. So that's pretty close. Pretty close. 
to our target point. So I'm happy with that as our first uh, target area, as in a waypoint. So it doesn't, when you're doing a laser guided bomb, I'm just gonna go active pause here. When you're doing a laser guided bomb, you don't have to be exactly accurate. Okay, so you just gotta be, you know, within, within the general area, okay? So when we uh, do our bomb toss, the bomb's gonna lob up and then it's gonna pick up the laser that's being fired by our JTAC right now at that uh, SA-6. All right, you can see the SA-6 there. We zoomed in as much as we can at the, J, uh, the targeting pod right now. And then as soon as the, the bomb picks up the laser, it's gonna, it's gonna guide itself in. So it doesn't need to be exactly spot on perfect with the, J, uh, the laser guided bomb because it's being guided in by a laser source. With the JDAM, you need to be bang on exact right on the point, okay? So what we're gonna do, we're gonna unpause and we're gonna write down the coordinates of our next guy. So I know that the other SAM site was over here somewhere. There's that one. There we go, there's the other group. So we're gonna get in closer here ourselves over that way we want to get this one right here oh you bastard when you just go ahead and hit the wrong button i hit undesignate for some reason because i'm an idiot right there there again all right so as we get closer we're going to write down this grid coordinate right and the elevation I'm gonna write them both down so I want this to be bang on right on the point and then you can write down the coordinate all right and then uh, use that as a waypoint to designate and the reason for it if you're using your uh, your targeting pod so right now, let's see if I can get it to do it. So it won't happen all the time, but sometimes it does. It, it'll happen where, um, so let's take, let's actually, my brain is scattered right now. So we're gonna write down that coordinate just to, just to make sure that it hasn't changed. 38 T KM 5712, and then six six eight eight six and then elevation is 24 feet all right so we've got that there happy days so what i'm going to do my targeting pod is looking at him i've got it designated this is my target spot all right i'm looking in the area and we're just going to fly in here i'm going to get shot at Turn that down because it's making me hurting my ears. We're flying in. We've picked out our target and we're like, all right, there he is. I've got him. My targeting pod's looking exactly where he needs to be looking. I can run in and do a, uh, a bomb drop. Okay. cruising in we're just going to wait for him to fire and this is just as an example of what can happen sometimes all right he's fired at us we're going to go evasive so shit we need to uh get out of here let's pop some of those altitude altitude Alright, so we uh, successfully nearly killed ourselves, but we didn't. Alright, now, we've evaded the SAM site. Alright, cool, alright, let's extend away. We've got old mate on our, our targeting pod. We're looking right at him. So we're going to extend away now and uh, get eyes back on him. Alright, so we can do our bomb run. Here we go, let's kick her up. And we'll 
look around and let's see where our targeting pod is looking now. So I didn't touch it at all. Didn't touch the targeting pod whatsoever. All right, our targeting pod is now looking in the trees. It's nowhere near looking at the target. Okay, it is looking in those trees. That's where it is. The SAM site, no idea. No idea where the SAM site is. All right, but our targeting pod lost it. It lost the spot. And that happens when you get down super low and the targeting pod starts picking up on uh, the ground terrain. It just, it, it wigs out. Okay, so, and I've had that happen to me a lot where I've uh, tried to do a bomb run. I've picked out a target exactly like that. I got shot at and I went evasive, hit the deck and was like, cool, I know where he is. And then I just turn around and do a, uh, a bomb run on the target that I thought I had, but my targeting pod is actually moving. Okay, so let's go back so we're not masked here. We'll compare our coordinates, not that we really need to because you can see it's clearly not looking in the same area. So that was our coordinates before we did our evasive maneuver. 38 TKM, 571236686, 24 feet. And now it's looking at elevation 386, grid 37 TGG, 39665583530. So it has moved out of the way. So it's, it's pretty much screwed itself over. So that's why you want to have a, uh, a waypoint as your target. So we're going to re-slew now. So I'm going to unbox that. I'm going to re slew back to waypoint number one because I know that's where the SAM site was. And we're going to come across, see if we can pick out the other SAMs. Stuff on fire. That must have been when the missiles hit when they were trying to chase us. All right, whatever. We'll do a, uh, we'll do a bomb run on waypoint one first. Then I'll show you the way to get around that. Okay, your targeting pod wigging out. We need a mark point instead. All right, so we're gonna re-designate waypoint one because we know that's pretty much where we wanna be. <clears throat> and we're gonna do a uh, laser guided bomb run now. So we, uh, to do this, you need to be in auto mode. Okay, on auto mode. And you're gonna do this as follows. So we're currently 19, 20 miles from target. So we're gonna go and descend down. So we'll probably, um, so we're not flying over the top of the other sand site there. That would not be the smartest. Fuck it. We'll do it live. Altitude. Altitude. As proof of concept, can we uh, take out a, the far sand site by flying over the close sand site? Okay, so we're using our waypoint designation. We're going to come in super fast. Come in full, uh, full afterburner, full gate. And we're looking for a range of 6.5 nautical mile. All right, I'm just going to uh, active pauses here. So what we're looking for, we want to be nice and low. All right, nice and low, lower the better. Full afterburner, going as fast as we possibly can. And we're looking for a range to target of 6.5 nautical mile. As soon as we hit 6.5, we're going to pull back on the stick and we're going to pull our nose up until we're at 30 to 35 degrees nose up. As soon as we hit 30 to 35, we're going to hold and let our aircraft stabilize. I'm going to release the stick, get our wings level and just let the aircraft sit there. And our release timer, okay, that guy there, that's going to start counting down real fast as soon as we start pulling up. And then we're going to get the bomb fall line will appear go through our velocity vector which is going to be sitting around 35 degrees nose up and we're going to press and hold so as soon as we start pulling back on the stick we're going to press and hold our weapon release button and then we're just going to wait for that bomb fall line to go through our velocity vector that is when the uh the bomb will pickle off then we're going to turn cold split us away and then we should get the uh, notification from the jtac saying that our target has been destroyed so let's give it a crack let's go so we're in full Afterburner, cranking along. We're staying low, so we're trying to stay out of the, uh, the the detection area of the SAM site. Coming in low. We've got a little bit of terrain 
to hide behind, but that's not going to be the case forever. So as we get over the top of this hill, it's going to start being able to see us unless we stay low. Alright, so we're at 8 mile from target. Alright, so we're looking at 6.5. There we go, pulling back on the stick. Pull the way out. Let our aircraft stabilize. Holding the weapon release. Weapon away, and we turn cold. Okay, we've got 37 seconds time to impact. We are getting back out of the threat area of the SA-6. Our bomb is on its way. Altitude. We just get out of there. Back down low. And we'll just sort ourselves out on autopilot here. We should be safe. I'm gonna go to bomb mode or bomb view. All right, you can see it's picked up the laser. It is tracking. It's got the JTAC laser now. And it is honing in the control F11. Boom. And then you go JTAC status. Target destroyed, laser new target. Bam, there's our new target. Okay. Lovely, lovely, lovely. So we took him out doing a laser guided bomb drop. All right, so let's just extend away and uh, we'll get ourselves the next grid coordinate for the JTAC here. Just that off. Okay, so let's get his uh, JTAC status again. And it is the 57121 66886. Okay. Alright. No, oh, we already had that. Doesn't matter. Righto, so we're going to undesignate and we're going to get ourselves. Uh, the new waypoint, so let's get into the data. We're going to punch this in now. UFC grid. Uh, KM. So I'm just updating. This is the JTAC uh, new grid he's given us. So we want 5, 7, 1, 2, 1, 6, 6, 8, 8, 6. Enter and elevation. Let's just make it all right. We know it was 24 feet because we we're looking at it before, but let's just go for example, go 100 feet. Okay, because we're guessing it. The JTAC didn't give us the altitude. Okay, didn't give it to us. So now we've got that uh, waypoint made. Let's go ahead and hit waypoint designate. Swap that over there. Get our HSI back up here. Oh, sorry, our clear pod. And let's bank back around. And have a looky. Alright, all pilots back on. Make our targeting pod as our sensor. I'm gonna zoom in. Okay, so you can see now that it's not exactly at the uh it's not exactly on the target, it's sitting above him. Okay, the mark is above our target, okay, because we didn't know the exact altitude. So we need to change that because otherwise our JDAM is going to miss because our JDAM is looking at that exact spot 100 feet above him, okay, or whatever it is. So we're going to make, we're going to readjust our targeting pod. All right, we're going to put him where we think it should be. Okay, so I'm pretty, pretty happy with that. All right, so now what I'm gonna do, I'm gonna press mark point right here. Okay, so mark point, I hit that, mark. And now we've put a mark point at that exact spot. So at this grid reference, 38 TKM 571226 elevation 25 feet, we've got a mark point there. So then if we uh, get shot at and we go evasive, it doesn't matter if our targeting pod moves now. So we're going to uh, undesignate that. We're gonna come down. So to get to your mark points, scroll back 
through waypoint zero, then keep going. You go mark point nine. So it's going to be mark point number one. Cause it's the first mark point we used. There we go. So if I just move my targeting pod here, just move it out of the way. Totally looking somewhere different. All right. We've designated a target with 40 miles. So what I'm going to do now is just waypoint designate and our targeting pod is going to snap straight to that position. Okay, right next to that SAM site. So use a mark point. Once you've ID'd a target, use a mark point to pick a spot on the ground so that it's more accurate and your J, it doesn't matter if your, uh, your targeting pod wigs out like it did. All right, so now what we're gonna do, we're gonna do the exact same thing now, except with a JDAM. So the, the mode we want for the JDAM, okay, we wanna be in target of opportunity mode. Make sure you set your uh, fusing. So we're gonna go on instantaneous. And then in the display JDAM, all right, we want to go to release type and we're going to select auto loft and we're going to go 30 degrees, okay, 30. I'm going to click 30 on there and that's it. So now we're going to pretty much do the exact same thing we did with the laser guided bomb, except now we're going to do it with the JDAM. So you can see we've got a, uh, a bomb full line and line ourselves up with. And we're going to do the exact same thing. As soon as we get to 6.5 mile, we're going to pull back on the aircraft, holding the weapon release, and then as soon as we go through, so it's not going to be, uh, it'll be a little bit quicker on the pullback than the laser guided bomb. So as soon as you start pulling back, make sure you press and hold weapon release. Okay. So this is a, a bomb toss using the JDAM now. All right, so they're shooting at us. Just uh, hold our nerve here. All right, we've line of sighted him. Altitude. He can't see us anymore. Altitude. Pull up, pull up. Don't hit the trees, bro. All right, so let's go ahead, kick speed in. Kind of line ourselves up here. 12 mile out, just so conveniently we've got a little hill to hide behind. So line ourselves up. And then we're looking for the same thing, 6.5 nautical mile. As soon as we start pulling back, we're gonna press and hold weapon release. And it's gonna do its thing. All right, here we go. Press and hold, weapon release. Weapon away. Altitude, altitude. Bomb has definitely left the aircraft. And same deal. Put ourselves on parametric bombs doing its thing cruising in we'll just uh we won't watch that one hit we'll just watch for the jtac to say it's been destroyed or not because sometimes you're not gonna have the luxury of watching your bomb do its thing so it might take a little bit because it wasn't uh it was slightly off to the right of it mark so it should have hit by now so the the sand's probably on fire it hasn't been destroyed yet so we'll just swing back around and have a looky with our targeting pod all right so at the moment there's a uh, bug the sand side is actually on fire you can see the smoke there but uh, this patch, this patch, bro, you can't see the smoke. So when that explodes in a second, you can see it's definitely on fire there. You just can't see the smoke in the targeting pod for whatever reason. All right, so it's being hit, it's burning, and we'll just speed up time here. It should blow up. There we go. It's exploded. 
And there we go. Target destroyed. Laser from target. Now it's just picking out random uh, search. Random uh, launches and stuff down there. Any other targets in the area, Jay's just going to laser more. So that is how you do a, uh, a JDAM strike. So you can see, because we were pretty far away when we um, put our mark point down, the closer you are, the more accurate your mark point's going to be. Because um, we're about, I don't know, 20 miles away when we put that mark point down. Fair way away. You can see that we had a little bit of inaccuracy, but it was close enough to actually hit the, uh, the site and kill it. So if you want it bang on, get as close as you can before you put the mark point down. And then the, the, uh, the JDAM will hit pretty much exactly where you're looking. But if you're from ages away, then yes, there's going to be inaccuracy of a mark point. Uh, and ideally, uh, the, it'd be cool if we could get the JTAC to have a give us the coordinates, the laser code, the coordinates, and the elevation of the target in both feet and meters. I'm sure it's, uh, it's probably an easy thing to get done. I don't know how to do it, but if anyone uh, that knows how to do that is watching, could you please uh, reach out and show us how to, how to do it? Or if uh, Siri Bob, the maker of CTLD, could add that in, if you ever watch this video, that would be super handy for the other uh, Hornet, just because it doesn't have uh, an automatic elevation. Whereas the, uh, the A-10, the uh, Apache, I'm not sure about the F-16, but they have got, as soon as you punch in accordance, it auto automatically updates the elevation of that spot on the ground. The Hornet doesn't do that, so that's why we need the elevation for the Hornet to be accurate with JDAMs. Anyways, guys, I hope that uh, helped. I hope you learned something. And yeah, go hard, put some JTACs in your missions and uh, have them lay some targets for you. It's super cool. And you can, like I said, you can set up the priorities so you can have the JTAC, um, have it so he only... You know, he targets all the SAMs first and go for our uh, AAA and then you know ground units after that. You can set the priority up so it's a bit more realistic. You can make him have smoke if you want. And then just practice, load up a mission exactly what I just did there and practice your uh, your bombing runs. See how far out you can, you know, you can experiment. You can try pulling back from like seven miles, eight miles, nine miles. See how far out you can actually be uh, to to get a JDAM or a, a sorry a, a laser guy to bomb off without exposing yourself for too long because obviously the further back you are the higher you're going to have to pull up or the higher you're going to have to climb to get into range to drop the bomb and the higher the more the more height you are above the target area for longer the more exposed you are the more chance of getting shot down by a, uh, a SAM site so 6.5 is a pretty good rule of thumb stay low 6.5 pull back hold the weapon release as soon as the bomb comes off the jet get the shit get the hell out of there hit the deck again chaff and flares get out and then let your bomb do its work take the sand side out have fun doing your seed boys with sand uh, with the, the bombs rather than just doing the uh the super easy i'm uh, just gonna fucking pelt a, a harm in from 50 miles away and just kill the sand site no dramas you can get in there into the knife fight anyways guys hope you did like it if you did like the video uh, helps me out a bunch if you throw a like down got any questions queries or comments throw them in the comments and i will do my best to get back to you all and lastly but not least if you haven't already i would super appreciate if you subscribe to the channel uh it helps me out super good super good helps me out super good helps me out a lot uh, and it's super good that you guys are all loving the the content um if you guys weren't liking it and watching it i probably wouldn't be doing it so yeah thank you guys appreciate all the support that you guys give by watching and liking and commenting and yeah if you just hit the subscribe button thanks champion you're a fucking bloody bloody legend all of you see if we can hit uh we're almost at three and a half thousand subscribers see if we can get up to four we'll see how we go there keep trucking along anyways guys catch us on the next video peace out